Come on back. Keep coming back. Keep your hands up. Keep coming back. Keep coming back to the sound of my voice. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. Stop right there. Get down on one knee and then the other. I got cuffs. Go ahead. Good? Keep your hands above your head. Don't move. What's going on? Why am I being... Police body cam and dash cam footage from last year at a Fort Lupton, Colorado shows just how little police officers think while they're on the job, even though they have our lives under their protection. Where are you taking me? We're taking you to the car. Come on. Why? What? Do you have anything on you that's going to poke me, stick me, hurt me? No, ma'am, but can I please get my cell phone? We'll get your cell phone in a second. Is there any weapons in the car? Ready? No, ma'am, there's nothing on There's no weapons in the car? Okay. Anybody else in the car? What's going on? Ma'am, what's going on? I'll tell you in a second. Take a seat. I'm so confused. Can I get Take my a seat? Cell phone? I will get your cell phone for you. Take a seat. Now that we've seen the suspect arrested and put in new handcuffs, pay attention very closely to where the police cruiser is. It's parked on a set of railroad tracks. And this is why law enforcement needs to be held to a higher standard than a whole bunch of other professions in our country. Because they literally have our lives and personal safety in their hands. It took her a long time to pull over. I got a holster right here in the passenger seat. Okay. I just, it took her a very long time to pull over. I'm going. Did you see her toss anything? I, 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 she could have because it took her a long time to pull over. While the officers are searching the driver's truck for any type of weapon, they completely ignore the suspect who was handcuffed in the back of the police cruiser, which is sitting on the train tracks. She could have because when I was behind her, she was driving slow enough. Yeah. So she could have tossed something, but I literally tossed it out the window. She could have out that window, but who is, is that? Hart? No, that's a. Uh... The moments leading up to that train hitting the police cruiser with a suspect in the car make me sick because you have a situation where there are two officers searching the driver's truck for a possible weapon and that is all they're concerned about. They're not concerned about the fact that there's a whole human being in the police cruiser which is placed clearly on the railroad tracks and even when they recognize that the train is going to crash into the cruiser, the level of alarm is really not that high. It's not what you would expect, specifically with that officer who's closest to the vehicle. He kind of backs up and then looks in the car and continues to back up as if, as if to say, oh yeah, you SOL lady, like, you got to fend for yourself. And it's just a sheer lack of humanity and negligence by all the officers involved. And thankfully, uh, the woman, or fortunately, the woman did survive, but she did suffer serious injuries, including broken ribs and a fractured sternum because she had nobody to help her except herself, but it's kind of hard to do so when your hands are behind your back because you have handcuffs on. The DA's office dismissed the most serious charge against the woman officer, Jordan Stanky, who placed the woman into the police cruiser, which was on the railroad tracks. Now that charge was second degree felony assault. She still faces less serious charges in connection with the incident, including felony attempted reckless manslaughter and misdemeanor reckless endangerment. And she was placed on administrative leave after the collision and remains on leave. The sergeant, Pablo Vasquez, whose patrol car was on the railroad tracks, he's been charged with five misdemeanor counts of reckless endangerment. Let's fast forward to July of 2023. According to the CBS News article, Stanky was found guilty of reckless endangerment, but acquitted of an attempt to commit manslaughter and the verdict was not decided by a jury. What's interesting, in her testimony, Stanky says that she never doubted the tactical position of Sergeant Pablo Vasquez, whose police cruiser was placed on the railroad tracks. Well, maybe you should have, right? Can't be on autopilot thinking every police officer does their job well because police officers are human, so you need to account for that. And she also said she never would have placed the suspect, Yoreni Rios Gonzalez, into the police cruiser if she had known that the cruiser was placed on the railroad tracks. But prosecutors say, yeah, I don't know how dark it was because the officer crossed the railroad tracks like five times during the traffic stop. Do I think they're going to give her a harsh punishment? Probably not, because we've seen so many times in American society that police officers 
are not held to the same standard as other citizens in this country. And I just hope that Yurini is able to get some form of monetary damages to help pay for her rehab, physical therapy, and mental therapy um, for what these officers did to her by not giving a damn about her humanity.